A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel, the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. Verbum Domini. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior.
Dominus Vobiscum. Rexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Verbum Domini. Today the church celebrates the optional memorial of Pope St. Pius V. And his life and achievements are too interesting not to mention. He was elected Pope in a very difficult time in the life of the church. After the Protestant Revolution in 1517, the church recognized the need to call a council, to call for church reform, and to deal with the questions surrounding so much turmoil in the life of the church, not to mention the errors of the so-called Protestant reformers. Pope St. Pius V's main intention in his governance of the church was to carry out the reforms set out by the Council of Trent. It was his influence and by his example that he called bishops and priests back to a more simple and austere life, as well as a deep liturgical prayer life centered in the offering of the holy sacrifice of the Mass he also published the Catechism of the Council of Trent, which gave priests a very formal outline in preaching doctrinal homilies on different topics throughout the liturgical year. A few interesting facts about the life of St. Pius V. He was a Dominican friar, and when he was elected Pope, he didn't want to stop wearing the traditional Dominican habit that was white. So this is why the Pope still wears white to this day. And we can thank Pope St. Pius V for that, that the Pope wears white because of the Dominican influence in the papacy. Pope St. Pius V is also known for the excommunication of Elizabeth I in England. She was excommunicated for imprisoning Catholic bishops who refused to acknowledge her as the supreme governor of the particular church in England at the time. Elizabeth I is also known for reintroducing the oath of supremacy which forbade bishops and priests to recognize anyone other than the queen as supreme governor in spiritual and ecclesiastical as well as temporal affairs in England. And because of Elizabeth I, heresy spread like wildfire in England. And unfortunately, we still see the effects of these actions in England more than 
almost 500 years ago. Another fact that you may be more aware of about Pope St. Pius V is his spiritual coalition that he formed. And when he asked Catholics to pray the Holy Rosary for the Christian forces to defeat the extremist Muslim group called the Moors at the Battle of Lepanto. And it did not look good that day for the Christian fleet. But after the Pope asked for public prayers, and particularly the praying of the Rosary at his request, the Ottoman Empire was destroyed. It could be said that because of this victory, Western Europe remained Christian for centuries. After the victory, a liturgical feast under the title of Our Lady of Victory was established, giving thanks to our Blessed Mother for preserving Christianity in Western Europe. And now this feast is now called Our Lady of the Rosary on October the 7th. And speaking of the Holy Rosary, perhaps it is more necessary than ever that Catholics pray the Rosary for peace in the world. Maybe something like a Holy Rosary Crusade started by the famous Father Walter Payton in the 1940s when he really addressed the whole world for praying the Rosary for unity in family life. And the Rosary is so crucial for our times in praying for peace in the world. Father Peyton, as well, was inspired by the example of Pope St. Pius V in calling people to take up spiritual weapons, to take up the Holy Rosary. And there is a recent story that has been getting very much attention in the Catholic media, not so much the secular media, but over Catholic media throughout the world. Bishop Oliver Dashi, a bishop from Nigeria, says that he has seen a vision of Christ and now knows that the rosary is the key to ridding the country, his country, Nigeria, the country of the Islamic terrorist organization Boko Haram. He said, and these are his words, today toward the end of last year, or towards the end of last year, I was in my chapel before the Blessed Sacrament, praying the Rosary. And then suddenly the Lord appeared. In a vision, the bishop said, Jesus didn't say anything at first, but extended to him a sword, and in turn he reached out for it. The bishop says, as soon as I received the sword into my hands, the sword turned into a rosary. The sword turned into a rosary. He said, as, I, as soon as I received that sword, adding, he said, Jesus told him three times, Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. He further said, I didn't need any prophet to tell me the meaning of this explanation. The bishop says, it was clear that with the rosary, we would be able to expel Boko Haram. The bishop did not want to tell anyone, but he said he felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to get this message out to tell people to start praying the rosary, to start praying the rosary for peace. 
In 2009, Bishop Dashi had over 125,000 Catholics under his care. And today, after the rise of violence in extremist Islam group Boko Haram, there are only 50,000 to 60,000 Catholics left. So over half Catholics have left that area of Nigeria. And many of them have fled to safer areas of Nigeria, and some are returning now home after being away for some time. And I mention this specifically because I know many people from Nigeria watch the Daily Mass. I was so surprised at this when we would travel for World Youth Day and meet Nigerians in the airport and many other places. They would come directly up to us and say, Father, thank you so much for what you do at EWTN. We watch you all in Nigeria. It was kind of a shock to me. Wow, we reached that far? So I wanted to specifically m mention that, that especially to our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, we are united with you in prayer. We haven't forgot about you. The over 6,000 Nigerians who, has, who have lost their lives at the hands of so much violence is not going without notice. The mystical body of Christ, the church, is reaching out to you. And we want to pray with you and for you. Bishop Dashi has just completed a consolation tour, he calls it, to communities in his diocese, promoting forgiveness and continued faith. He believes he was asked by Jesus to spread devotion to the rosary in order to aid them as they do so, to aid them as they strive forward for the path of forgiveness and healing and reconciliation. This is exactly the message that needs to be heard by us. In so much hatred, in so much violence, in so much discord in the world, we need the message of forgiveness as Christians. Forgiveness is a particular trademark of the Christian. Forgiveness is not a suggestion by Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is a divine mandate from Jesus. He demands us to forgive our enemies, and especially our persecutors, and to pray for them. We cannot be Christian if we don't forgive, most especially forgiving our enemies forgiving our persecutors. You could see this in the many acts of terrorism and violence throughout the world today. When Christians are being slaughtered, they're praying for their enemies. They're asking forgiveness. They're calling out to Jesus for mercy. They are not cursing their enemies. They're not cursing their oppressors. And what an example that is for us when we have so much violence even in our own country throughout the world today. In the recent years in St. Louis, especially now in Baltimore, Maryland, close to where I'm from, so much violence there that, we're, that we all need to be united in prayer. And perhaps what we should all be doing as Catholics is taking up this weapon, the Holy Rosary. Taking up this weapon. St. Padre Pio, when he would get dressed in the morning, later in life, when his older brothers were helping him put on his habit, the last thing he would say was, hand me my weapon. 
was talking about this. He's talking about the rosary. And perhaps we should be doing as Catholics this, is taking up our rosary every single day. And yes, I said every day. Every single day as Catholic Christians. And we should be praying. We should be forgiving. And fasting, too. Jesus is very clear in the Gospels that there are some demons that cannot be expunged except through prayer and fasting. And that there is no time in our recent history that is in more need of this. And I mention that in that order, especially to pray the rosary every single day, to fast, to mortify yourselves of something. There's something that we can cut out of our day, cut off our plates, I'm sure. But most of all, to pray the rosary and to forgive most of all within the midst of that. To forgive those that have, in our own lives, perhaps have caused us some discord, some harm in our own lives. The plea of this Nigerian bishop should be heard worldwide we should all be praying the Holy Rosary for peace in the world, for peace in our families, and for peace in our own hearts. Because ultimately, that's where peace begins. First, in our own hearts. When we've allowed the mercy of Jesus Christ to so much permeate and take control of our own lives to allow Jesus to forgive us, then we're going to be more apt to forgive others if we allow Jesus to forgive us. So it first starts in our own hearts, allowing the forgiveness and mercy of Jesus Christ to forgive us, to extend that to others, and to pick up your holy rosary, to pick up that rosary every single day, and to pray for peace in the world, peace in your families, and peace in your own hearts. God bless you.